Hello students of science. In this video we're going to talk about different acid-base theories that are out there. As you can see already from the title, I am going to be color coding everything. All acid related things are going to be red. All base related things are going to be blue to indicate what they do to litmus paper. So first thing we need to talk about the Arrhenius acid and bases. I already mentioned this in a previous set of notes, but the Arrhenius theory, in summary, an acid is something that increases the concentration of hydrogen cations when you put it in solution. HCl dissociates to form this hydrogen proton, that cation, and the chlorine anion there. Really, we're actually talking about what's called hydronium. You really don't see these bare protons out there, but it's functionally the same thing. So it's really an H3O positive. So that's a water with that hydrogen attached to the water molecule. So here's a little bit more accurate. It's really HCl plus water is going to dissociate to form my hydronium cation and the chlorine anion. A base, by the Arrhenius theory, is going to be a compound that increases the concentration of a hydroxide anion, the OH negative anion. HNO2 plus water is going to make this hydronium cation plus the NO3 anion there. A base, sodium hydroxide plus water is going to make the sodium cation plus the hydroxide anion. So my Arrhenius acid is going to be the HNO2, my Arrhenius base is the sodium hydroxide. Because this one is increasing the concentration of the hydronium cations, this one is increasing the concentration of the hydroxide anions. Another theory that was kind of refined a little bit down from the Arrhenius is called the bronsted wallery Now, there's probably a better way to pronounce that, but, you know, I don't know it. So the bronsted wallery expands the Arrhenius definition and includes more compounds. So an acid, instead of something that's going to increase the concentration of hydronium, that's going to be a molecule that's going to donate a proton. It's kind of the same, but it's actually a little bit more specific and actually gives you a little bit more criteria that it falls under. So gave that base a proton. Bases love protons. Here you can see we have hydrochloric acid. It's going to donate that proton to that water molecule there and form that hydronium. Bases is a molecule that is a proton acceptor. So this would be a proton acceptor because it takes the H, it takes the proton from the hydrochloric acid. Here I have a base and I have water. You can see that is now becoming what's called a conjugate acid, but more on that later. But here this proton is joined to that. That means it's a base. Examples, HCl plus NH3, this is going to be my bronsted lowry acid, this is going to be my bronsted lowry base, because what's happening is the proton is going from here to there. So this is my acid, because it's donating the proton, this is my base, because it's going to be accepting that proton. It's my lowry acid, here's my bronsted lowry base. Here's another one, again with ammonia, and this time with water. The ammonia is going to be acting as a base because it is going to be accepting a proton from that water molecule there. So the ammonia becomes an ammonium cation and the water becomes the OH minus. So once again, here I can see proton being donated from HCl, hydrochloric acid, to water. That's because this is a bronsted lowry acid. This is going to be acting as a bronsted lowry base as a proton acceptor. Same idea. You can see the proton in this case being physically transferred. That's my acid. Here's the base. This is the acceptor. That was the donor. So monoproduct and polyproduct acids. You don't need to write all of these down. Just write down the basics. Monoproduct acid is the one that can donate one proton per molecule. That's called a monoproduct acid. Example, HCl plus water. There's going to be one proton donated to solution, donated to make this hydronium ion there. Monoproduct acids, HCl, HNO3, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid. Polyproduct, on the other hand, that's going to be an acid that's going to donate more than one proton per molecule. So we have diproduct examples. That's H2SO4, and you don't need to write this down. I'm going to be writing a whole lot here if you try to write everything. But H2SO4 is going to partially dissociate. One of those protons is going to go and make this hydronium cation here, and then we're left with HSO4 as my anion. This one can further, I mean, you almost have to follow it down to there, that can further go to here and dissociate yet again, because remember, it's diprotic, and now it's going to create yet another hydronium cation and my sulfate anion there. So this is diprotic, just like carbonic acid. It's going to donate two protons. There's also a triprotic example out there. Don't write this down, but it's the same idea. It's going to be donated. One proton goes from here, is going to go to the water, and we get that cation there. Then again, this one right here, this anion is going to dissociate again, and that's going to go to another water molecule. We're going to get yet another one, and it's going to finally dissociate one more time, and we're going to get three protons that were donated into the solution. 
Lewis acids, on the other hand, is an even broader definition, and this expands to include a lot of things that don't even have to do with the hydrogen anion. According to Lewis, a Lewis acid is an atom, an ion, or a molecule that accepts an electron. So we're not even talking about protons now. Now we're talking about electrons moving from place to place. A Lewis acid accepts electron pairs. So here I have a Lewis base and a Lewis acid because they're reacting together. The Lewis acid has a vacant electron orbital. Electrons could go in there. That makes it a Lewis acid. A Lewis base, on the other hand, it's got these filled orbitals that it's going to be donating. The base donates, the acid accepts. So just think Lewis acid, acceptor, base is the donor. So a base is an atom, an ion, or a molecule that's going to donate an electron pair to form a covalent bond. Here we have another one, the donor is donating the electrons to the acceptor, the acid, to form a complex there. Another acid donating its electrons to an acid there to form a complex. Again, you can really see here, this is all about the movement of electrons, not really protons in this case. So I don't even need to see hydrogen moving from place to place. Now we're talking all about electrons are moving from one compound to another. So let's try to compare these. We've got the Arrhenius acid. That's one that's going to either be producing these protons or the hydronium. Remember, they're kind of the same thing. And an Arrhenius base is going to produce hydroxides. Bronsted-Lowry, it's not so much the things that produce it, it's more that they are now donating it. They are giving that proton to another. And of course, a Bronsted-Lowry base is going to be accepting that proton from another. And then the Lewis acid is going to be one that's going to be accepting an electron pair from another compound. A Lewis base is one that's going to be donating to a different compound. So make sure that you have these. This is kind of the basic, all summarized together here of the types of acids and bases that we're looking at. I threw this together just because I kind of want to show how these fit together, because it seems like it's throwing a lot of different names at you. Arrhenius acids, branstad valery acids, and Lewis acids. All Arrhenius acids are actually Lewis acids as well. All bronsted lowry are also Lewis acids. The Lewis acid is just the broadest definition. It encompasses these and some other things that these kind of exclude it. Arrhenius acids, remember, those are things that are going to be increasing the proton concentration. bronsted lowry those are going to be things that are going to be donating protons, and the Lewis acids are things that are going to be accepting electrons. Example of an Arrhenius acid, nitric acid, remember it's going to be producing these cations in solution. Hydrochloric acid produces these cations in solution. Bronsted lowry has nothing to do with hydronium ions. Really, all we're looking at there is that a proton is being donated from here to there. So this is going to be my Bronsted lowry acid, and it's going to be donating the proton to the ammonia to turn it into the ammonium cation. And Lewis acids, not even talking about the movement of protons. Just all about this boron trifluoride is going to be accepting an electron pair from this fluorine anion there to form this complex. So this is my Lewis acid. This is going to be my Lewis base. But remember, these are all describing roughly the same idea. It's just that Lewis acid is the biggest one, the definition that encompasses all of these and then some.